So now let's understand the time complexity of quicksort, right? So if you look at it, what's happening in the case of quicksort, you have a problem of size n, right? Now using partition, you're using the partition function, right? You're breaking this problem into a problem of size. So you're taking this pivot element, placing it here. You're breaking it into a problem of size n1 and n2, right? Such that n1 plus 1 plus n2 is equal to n, right? So roughly you're breaking the problem into this format. So if you write the time complexity of this, if you write the recurrence relation for it, you can say the time to solve a problem of size n is the time it takes to solve a problem of size n1 plus the time it takes to solve a problem of n2 plus to perform this partition operation, it's order of n. So you can write this as Cn, right? This is the recurrence relation that we have for quicksort such that n1 plus n2 plus 1 is equal to n. Or if you write this roughly, you can say, you can just ignore this one here a little, right? So n1 plus n2 is roughly equal to n, right? So this is the recurrence relation that we have. Now let's see what is the worst case first. What is the worst case that can happen? Let's see the worst case. Let's see the worst case first and then we'll come to the best cases and things like that, right? So the worst case will happen if imagine, imagine this is my original array. Let me change the color here. Imagine this is my original array of size X. This whole thing is an array of size N, right? After the partition function, imagine I break this array in such a way. If X is the smallest element, if let's say X is the smallest element, smallest or the minimum element, then what happens? X will stay here itself, right? At the end of your partition function, because there are no elements that are less than equal to X, right? If there are no elements less than equal to X, that's what is the definition of a minimal or the smallest element, right? Then X will stay here. This whole thing I need to redo. So in such a case, what happens? Your N1 is equal to zero. Your N2 is equal to N minus one, right? That's what happens, right? What is, this is the worst case. Because you're not actually splitting a problem into two parts. Your x, if it's a minimal element, then this is what will happen. So if you have a sorted array, if you have an already sorted array, imagine what happens. If you have an already sorted array where this is the smallest element, right? So let's, let's look, let's see what happens there. If your array is already sorted, right? Your x is here. This is a problem of size n. You apply partition. There are no elements less than x. So x stays the same. Now you have to sort this n minus one. Now if let's say the second element is y, y is also the second smallest element. That's what sorted array means, right? Then this will be, this will now, again, you perform partition, your x and y are done, right? Your x and y are done. You have a problem here of size n by n minus one. Now you'll have a problem of size n minus two. Now your pivot element is z and you keep going on like this. If your, if your array is already a sorted array, then what happens? Your n1 is equal to zero, your n2 equals to n minus one. So let's put these values back into the recurrence relation and see what happens. Now your recurrence relation will look like tn equals to t of zero, right? Because n1 equals to zero, which you can ignore because if you don't have any elements, there's nothing to sort, right? So your t of zero plus t of n minus one, plus Cn. So this you can completely ignore because if there are no elements, there is nothing to sort, right? So what do you have now? Tn equals to Tn minus one plus Cn, right? If, if, you, if you draw the recursion tree here, you have a problem of size n here. You have a pr problem of size n, which is broken down into a problem of size n minus one. And to solve the original problem, you need Cn. That's what this is, right? So this will become n minus two, Cn minus one, this will be broken down the problem of size n minus three, c n minus two, so on, so forth till one, right? And you'll have c two here. Now, if you sum up all of them, what do you get? If you sum up all of them in your recursion tree, there is nothing on the left side. On the left side, you have t zero. t zero is zero, right? Even here, there is nothing on the left side, it is zero. Even here, there is nothing on the left side, right? If you sum up all of them, what do you get? You get c into, n plus n minus one plus n minus two plus so on so forth till one. 
And what is this? This is C into N into N plus one by two. What is this? This is nothing but order of N square. So the worst case of quick sort, the worst case of quick sort is when you have an already sorted array. When you have an already sorted array, and when the split after partition, after partition, you got these two sub arrays of size n1 and n2. If n1 is of size 0 and n2 is of size n minus 1, then you have this recurrence relation. And your worst case, your worst case, your worst case time complexity, your worst case time complexity is order of n square. And this happens when you have an already sorted array, as we have seen here. Right? So we'll see, we'll see how to how to fix this. There are ways to fix this also. We'll come to it in the next video. But it's good to, so whatever we have right now, whatever we have discussed right now, the worst case is order of n square. There are there are some hacks for quicksort to fix this, to make this also order of n log n. We'll come to that in the next video. For now, the worst case is order of n square, right? Now, we have seen the worst case. What are some of the best cases? Let, let's see the best cases also, right? So if you have, when you have a problem of size n, when you have a problem of size n, right, you have your pivot element here. If through partition, if through partition, which is an order of n operation, if this whole thing is broken up into two problems, okay, such that your x is here, your n1 elements are here, your n2 elements are here. If let's say n1 is roughly equal to n by 2, which is roughly equal to n2. Let's say n1 and n2 are roughly equal to n by 2. Then what happens to my recursive equation, my recurs my recurrence relation, Tn equals to Tn by 2, Tn by 2, plus Tn by 2, plus Cn, which is nothing but 2Tn by 2, plus Cn. We've already seen this, right? If you recall, we have seen this for much sort. This is the same recurrence relation that we saw for much sort, right? Of course, much sort works very differently from quick sort. But the recurrence relation is the same. And what did we solve this recurrence relation? We saw this in the merge sort case. The solution here is Tn equals to order of n log n. Right? So the best case, if my elements are broken up into exactly half half, if my x is such that it breaks my whole thing into half and half here, then the time complexity is exactly the same as merge sort. But if it doesn't, in the case of worst case we saw, if the if the array is already sorted and I get this skewed n1 and n2 where n1 equals to 0 and n2 is n minus 1. In that case, my time complexity is order of n square. Right? Now there is a, there is a case in between. Okay, let's call it almost best case. Okay, let's call it almost best case. What happens in that situation? Let's see. Right? Imagine if I have my original array of size n here. Okay, this is my pivot element x, right? If this array was broken down in this way, so my x came here, let's say, let's say, let's say my x is here. Okay, let me just erase this. So my n1 and n2 are not of the same size. So this is my n1 and this is my n2. Let's say, let's say n1 is roughly n by 10. My n2 is roughly 9n by 10. Let's say, let's say. Okay, so what you have here is basically 10% of your elements are less than equal to x. Okay, and 90% of your elements and 90% of your elements are greater than equal to x. In the previous case, 50% of your elements are less than equal to x and 50% of your elements are greater than equal to x, roughly. Here, if, if the split is 1090, then what happens? Let's write the recurrence relation, right? Let's write the recurrence relation. Then your Tn will look like T n by 10 plus T 9 n by 10 plus C n. Now we want to solve this. This is the recurrence relation, right? For this, this is not the best case. This is not when n1 and n2 are equal to n by 2. This is when the split after, after I move my x to its original place, to the place where it should belong to, if I get this 1090 split, what do I do? This is my recurrence relation. How do I solve it? We have the recursion tree method, right? My favorite method. Okay, so you have, you start with n. This is broken up into a problem of size n by 10 and 9n by 10. And to combine both of them, you need cn, right? That's what it is, right? n by 10, 
9 n by 10 and C n. Okay, this again gets broken up into n by 10 by 10, which is n by 100, right? And uh, 9 n by 100. Okay, here what do I get? Here I get 9 n by 100 and 81 n by 100. Yes, because I have to multiply this by 9 by 10. Okay, similarly, this will keep getting broken down. It will keep getting broken down like this till the time I just get once. Right, till the time I get once. So now, if you just do the same recursion tree approach that we have been doing in so many cases, the total time it takes here will also be Cn. So at every stage, the total time to merge these two plus the time it takes to merge these two, right? This is not merging here, I'm sorry. Here, the partitioning, the time it takes to partition into this, the time it takes to partition into this, if I sum up both of them, I'll, I'll again get Cn. Now the fun part here is, what is the depth of this tree? Right? Because on this side, everything is broken by n by 10, n by 10, here it will be n by 1000, right? So on and so forth. So on this side, on this side, this tree, this length will be log n base 10. But on this side, if you see, on this side, you have 9n by 10, 81n by 10. Again, you'll have 9, 9 by 10 cube n, right? Again, you'll have 9 by 10 power 4n and so on and so forth. So on this side, on this side, on this side, the depth of the tree, the depth of the tree will not be constant everywhere. On this side, the depth of the tree is going to be log n by 10. On this side, the depth of the tree is going to be log n base 10 by 9. You can actually work it out. It's not rocket science. Right? So this, this is the depth of the tree. Now, let's take the maximum. Whatever is the maximum amongst both of them, let's take that. Right? So I'll add up these CN, 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 all of that I'll add up. Okay, when I add up all of these CNs, what is the max, what is the total number of CNs I'll have? I'll have CN into log N base 10 by 9. Right? Because this side, remember this side, the depth is going to be more. Because let, let, let's see an example, right? Let's assume N is 1000. Okay, by this stage, you already have a problem of size 100. Here you have a problem of size 10. Here you have a problem of size already one here. When you're going this direction, when you're going in this direction, the problem of size 1000 will become a problem of size 900. This becomes a problem of size 890 and so on and so forth. So this side, the tree is going to be longer or deeper than the tree on this side, right? So you just sum up all of them. So because at every stage it is going to be CN, what is the maximum depth here? Because this value is going to be larger than this value the maximum depth of the tree, the maximum depth of the tree is going to be log n base 10 by 9, right? Which means my total time complexity. Now, if I sum up all of them, if I sum up all of these, just like in my standard recursion tree, I would get Cn at every stage. But what is the maximum depth? Log n base 10 by 9. Okay, so what is this? This is nothing but Cn log n. Right? Of course, you can write it in, in order notation and you can say, this is nothing but, okay, I, I can skip the, I can skip the C part here. In the order notation, I can write it as order or theta of n log n, right? So I can write this whole thing as order of n log n. So even when I have a 90-10 split, this is important, even when I have a 90-10 split, which is, let's call that almost best case, my time complexity is order of n log n, even in this case. Of course, if I have a best case, it is order of n log n, that is straightforward. But this happens when you have a 50-50 split. But even when I have a 10-90 split, I can show mathematically that my time complexity is order of n log n. Right? All this is good. The only bad case or the worst case will happen. We'll find a solution to this. The worst case will happen in terms of time complexity. The worst case will happen if I have an already sorted array where every problem, where, where a problem of size n is broken up into a problem of size 0. Okay, so let, let me not draw it that way. The recursion tree problem. Okay, 0 and n minus 1, 0 and n minus 2, 0 and n minus 3. This is the, my worst case, because in this case, it is taking order of n square. Now, the big question here is, what did we start this whole thing with? If you recall, what did we say? We wanted to come up with an algorithm that is order of n log n. But now what we have, worst case, we have order of n square, which is worse than merge sort, right? Where did we reach? 
So there is a way around this. There is a way around this problem. There is a way around this conundrum. Okay, we'll see that in the next video. We know that as long as the array is not fully sorted, okay, as long as the pivot that I pick every time is not the smallest one. See, when my array is sorted, what is happening? Every time I pick a pivot, every time I pick a pivot, it is the smallest element amongst the elements that I need to sort. That's the problem, right? We'll come up with a solution in the next video, a very, very elegant solution in the whole of algorithms. One of my favorite solutions in the whole of algorithms to get rid of this order of n square problem. We'll make the worst case also not n square, but something better than that. That we'll see in the next video.